College. Um, just want to let you know that uh, some of you may know that uh, over the last year, the, the business office has really undergone a major undertaking in uh, rewriting procedures uh, with the assistance of the system office, uh, with the assistance of consultants, and um, we've been tackling audit findings, uh, particularly uh, re repeat audit findings. Um, you know, our, our chancellor does not want any of the colleges to have repeat audit findings. And um, one of the uh, major issues dealing with our, our audit findings have been capital equipment and uh, capital assets and, and sensitive equipment and the inventory uh, of that. And uh, we've painstakingly rewritten uh, procedures in the business office and uh, capital assets and, and equipment is one of the last areas that we're, that we're having to deal with. Uh, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be painstaking, um, but to make, it, to make it right, to get it right, we need your help. Uh, because we have to get it right. You know, whether you have five items on your inventory or you have 500 items on your inventory, uh, it, it, it has to be correct. And the uh, validity, the success of our annual financial statements depend on it. These financial statements are not just for the college. Uh, these financial statements are public, and, and they're open for public view. So these items that you know you may have control over, uh, they matter to the to the college's uh, financial statement success, which is a really really major uh, big big deal. And um, we're going to have the college's. Uh, inventory by department available to you today. Um, we need the corrected inventory forms back to the business office by May 15th. Um, if you have lost items, Campus police is, is involved in, in investigating those. So don't wait until May 15th if you have if there are lost items on your inventory uh, because campus police is in, involved in investigating those, those items. Um, uh, to discuss the college's new procedures. Could, could, yes, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong. The items on the inventory list these are current items that they should be in these, in these departments? Yes, sir. I just want, I want you to make that clear to them. Yes, sir. These items you should have. Uh, these items you should have. Uh, you should make every effort to locate these items. Uh, you need to look at each item uh, and locate them. Um, we have step-by-step -step procedures uh, that will be provided to you uh, at the end of this meeting. Uh, we're also going to have an acknowledgement form uh, that you will have to sign saying that you attended this training, uh, that you understand uh, the, the processes. Uh, those processes will be part of the packet that you're going to receive at the end of this meeting. And one other thing. Items that cannot be located, and I hope we can locate them all, as, as the dean indicated, that information will be forwarded over to uh, Chief Washington, and he's going to investigate. Yes, sir. The items that we did a disposal form on, in the past we would always still have them listed on that inventory. He's going to cover all of them. He'll cover all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go through that. Um, now, by turning in a disposal form, 
that doesn't mean that the item is going to come off of inventory. So if you've turned in, you may still be looking at that item and have turned in the disposal form. Uh, for the item to be re removed off of your inventory, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to go through that, 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 part, that process here. Uh, but one of our uh, consultants, uh, Mr. Bradley Williamson, he's a manager with Car and Riggs. Uh, who's a management and consulting firm uh, based out of Florida. Uh, he and uh, his uh, 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 others out, out of his office have spent days and hours uh, on campus uh, in the business office helping us to develop these procedures along with the system office. Um, and uh, now that we have these procedures in place, we have to follow them. We have to follow them. Um, and I think we have really good procedures. Uh, we know that this first round of uh, inventory is probably going to be very, very difficult. But in the future, uh, it should be much easier. Uh, it should be much easier. But we know that this first round is going to be difficult. Um, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Bradley Williamson, who's a manager with Car and Riggs, and uh, he is going to go through uh, the new campus procedures for fixed assets, for capital assets, and sensitive equipment. And uh, we're going to discuss these processes. Mr. Bradley Williamson. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay with this? Volume. I don't talk in front of people hardly ever. So uh, if you can't hear me, I just, you know, I'm an accountant. I just count beans and, you know. But um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dean Miller, for the introduction. So, so like he said, I, I'm with Car Riggs and Ingram. We're an accounting firm, a consulting firm. Um, I'm actually an audit manager, uh, you know, most of the time. When I was here, I was a consultant. Uh, it made sense to bring to bring me in as a consultant because you know I, I'm out auditing firms all the time and, and governments all the time, so I sort of know what the examiners are looking for, and when they say you know this needs to be fixed, and you know I, I, I sort of know you know maybe the best way to, or, or a few good ways to, to achieve that. So, um, like Mr. Miller said, to, to give you some context and some background, um, each year the college submits financial statements, they're, they're, they're audited and they submit them up to the systems office. That systems office gets everybody's financial statements in the community college system and they create a, a consolidated set of financial statements and those get, get passed on up um, to the point where you get to the state financial statement. So um, the capital assets was an area that in each of the last few years of the audit they, they had some findings and so essentially what the finding was was that what we were saying is on the financial statements. What we're saying we have for vehicles and buildings and equipment and library materials. What we say we have um, was inconsistent with what the AS400 system said we had. And and so um, what Tanya and I did, we spent a whole lot of time. You may remember uh, us walking around. I can't remember. I don't know if I. It was, yeah, that's right. We met and looked for some assets, trying to figure out where some of these older assets were um, uh, in order to reconcile and get down to where the number that we've been reporting is, is, is accurate or get to an accurate number and, and change what we're reporting. So um, we, spent, we spent quite a bit of time going through that. Capital assets is, you know, uh, one of these areas where, um, in, in this case, educators, worlds, and accountants' worlds collide a little bit. So if you can vision that, you know, the Venn diagram, you know, you, educators say teach and inspire and mentor and accountants, we're, we're boring and tick people off all the time. And, <laughs> but occasionally our worlds collide and capital assets is one of these areas. Um, because effectively, you know, you all are uh, acquiring equipment and, and things that are necessary. Um, and, and if it's over a certain threshold, accounting world, we have to track it. We have to make sure that we know where that asset is so that we can properly dispose of that asset, so we can count that asset, so that we can make sure all of the assets that we have are correct 
on the financial statement. So that's why you're here is whether you whether you like it or not, unfortunately, you're sort of part of the accounting system, at least when it comes to, to capital assets. So um, the goal here is to go through the capital asset procedures um, from the point that you've received the asset. Uh, the whole procedures cover from the time you've decided we need to get such and such equipment all the way through when we're going to dispose of that. But uh, after talking with Dean Miller, it sounds like the purchasing side is fine. We don't have, we didn't have any findings or anything related to the purchasing of equipment. It was all tracking and managing and how we got to a point where, you know, we had X amount of assets on the financial statements, but we weren't sure if that's actually what we had. You know, did we have more? Do we have less? You know, and that's where, uh, where we came in was to sort of fix that. And as part of fixing it, we want to figure out how did, how did it break in the first place? And that's where we started looking at the procedures and figuring out, um, you know, what went wrong, where, where we can improve. I'll tell you the two areas that we found when Tony and I were going around um, were assets that were disposed of and not communicated back to the, to the business office and assets that were relocated and not communicated back to the business office. So it was difficult for us to to find where this asset is to determine if even, it, it even still exists. So, um, so that just gives you a little background. And, that, and that's when we start looking at the procedures. Well, how did we get to this point where we're not, we're not, all the disposals aren't making it back to the business office. All of the, you know, the transfers aren't making it back to the business office. So Adam and uh, Adam Merkel, the person agent, and, and Ms. Tony Banks and Dean Miller, we sat down one day and, and hammered out some procedures, what, what actually happens in practice. Um, how we can sort of record what's happening in practice and then maybe make some modifications. So a lot of this stuff may not be brand new. Um, it, it, it's probably, in fact, a lot of it probably is not brand new. Um, so it'll look familiar, but, but identifying the different pieces of information we need along the way might be the, the new part. And that's sort of where the burden on, on y'all begins is, is the, part, is the uh, documentation. So let's see if this works. So today we're gonna, we're going to start it when you've received the asset. And we're going to go through um, tracking the asset. If you have to relocate that asset, and when you dispose of that asset, and then the best part, once a year when we count all of the assets. That, that is the funnest part, I promise. <laughs> a couple of things about inventory count before, actually before I get started on receiving. Um, this, this issue, capital assets not sort of matching up it is, you should know, is absolutely a not, a, not a bishop state issue. It is a very, very, very common issue through governmental entities that have multiple locations. You know, if you can imagine a city that has a, a motor pool over here and, and, a, and a waterworks over here. Keeping up with, with fixed assets is a challenge. There's no doubt about it. I'm not, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you it's easy because um, it's not. So, so. Uh, Years and years ago, before I was an accountant, uh, I worked at, at a rent-to-own company uh, where you know you rent furniture and appliances and electronics and all that. And we had to count. We had anywhere between 150 and 250 items in our store at any given time. We had to count this stuff three times a week. It was it was nuts. I mean, it took a couple hours every time. You figure over a period of a year, that's 150 times we're counting this stuff. It gets repetitive. Um, it's, it's boring. But what, what, I, what I learned was if, if we got busy in a couple of days, things didn't get counted. It got out of, out of hand quickly. Now we're trying to figure out where this piece went. Oh, it came in and then it left. And trying to you know, keep up with it was a, was a mess. And so y'all you, you know, are going to be counting. I think the state requires a minimum of once a year. Is that right? There's no rule that says you can't count this stuff every Friday after 2 o'clock if that's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll tell you that if you count it more often, if you do decide, I'm, you know, for my department, I'm going to count it quarterly. Um, when, you, when the annual count comes around, it's so much easier. It's so much easier, but um, it will be twice this year. It will be twice this year. Okay. So we'll do the one by, do by May 15th. Yes. And, then and then the year end is 930, so we'll do one then. Okay. Um, so let's start with receiving and asking. By the way, I, I also, for some reason in my head, have envisioned this being a bigger screen. So I hope everybody can see this. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's that. What's that? Yeah, yeah, others. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Well, you, can, you can enlarge, you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Can, 
can you tell you me what that is? Yeah, sure. You can? Okay, all right, I'll, 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 I'll share my love for these two. Right, oh, right. Right. Talk right. this one. Right. But I think you want to show somebody how to touch screen. Oh, I see. Show sure. 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 He's going to show you how to enlarge. Oh, like that? Intended to order, and it's the right quantity. You know, if, if they're supposed to ship two, and you only get one, and you're not there to catch it and note it, you know, it's going in the system as two, and then your inventory count comes around, and you're missing one, you don't know what happened. So the idea is to make sure at this point, when this asset is on campus and begins this journey through our system, that that you've got the right amount, of the right item. And again, that can be delegated. Talked about this magic, uh, the quantities on the shipping documents, what the quantities actually receive, uh, whether or not an item, or, you know, installation is part of the delivery or not, you know, all of that stuff. You as the buyer, you who gone out and gotten the quotes and submitted the online requisition, you know, you're going to be the best one to, to have that information. To know whether it's right. uh, we've got the shipping documentation we talked about. Um, now, if you, if you get a piece of equipment sent in by a, a transport company, you know, you're going to have a bill laid and they're going to require that you sign it. On FedEx, you're going to sign a little board, so you may not get a piece of paper with your signature on it at the end, but whatever packing document you get, bill of lading, shipping document, you know, whatever it is, you're going to want to make sure you sign that, indicating the quantity is correct, the model number is correct, the price, if the price happens to be on there, is what I'm expecting. You know, again, this is just an opportunity to make sure that it's correct and, and, and uh, right. Invoice must be received and approved by the buyer as evidenced by the buyer's signature on the invoice. Now, this is a little bit different because I think most of the time the invoices are going to go straight to AP. Is that right? Yeah. And AP's going to AP's going to have a purchase order, and they're going to be able to match this purchase order with the invoice, and so they're going to be able to to be able to conclude that it's you know it the invoice is matching what what you requested to purchase. So, if, if we go now, uh, information with the signature. don't have the receiving uh, information that you signed, where you signed it, showing you it was received, we're going to need your signature on the invoice. So, again, it's sorry. just so AP knows. I'm sorry. Oh. I just want to make one correction to that. AP is requiring signature on both of those both documents. Okay. On the invoice and on the receiving documentation. So, okay. can you clarify if the invoice comes into AP, 
How does it get into the hands of the of the department level? Then the AP either emails an electronic copy to them or either contacts them. They come by the office to physically sign it. Okay. So we've got a signature on the on the shipping documentation, whatever that is, and then another signature on the invoice. Um, well, when you received it, um, as said, should they verify the purchase order numbers on the receiving the papers? Um, that's not a terrible idea. There's no reason why you can't, you know, check everything for accuracy. Um, that may be helpful if for some reason we have uh, multiple POs for the same item. Like we, we've ordered a lot of five equipment here and then a lot of another five over here and, and you get the shipping document. We, you know, to make sure we're not crossing purchase order, that, that's not a bad idea at all. A lot of times you just grab those things and start to the side. It's all good. And then whatever you have at that point, um, if AP doesn't have it, you're going to want to forward it to AP. But we're going to get, before we move on to the next uh, topic, the next procedure, you know, the, the whole idea here is that, you know, you're going to want to make sure you manage and, and manage your inventory and have everything related to that inventory. So um, I would say if you have a shipping document in your hands and you have an invoice in your hands and you've signed those, I, I'd say make a copy of them and, and keep them if you're not already doing that. Send the original to AP. Now you've got, you know, by the time you've gotten to this point, you've got your PO number from AP when you did your online requisition. You've got the billing doc, you've got the quotes, you've got everything. So let's keep all that together because you never know when, when down the road we may need that information. So <laughs> Tracking inventory by the business office. So when I say tracking, what, what I'm referring to, inputting it into the system, maintaining the serial numbers, counting it, making sure it's, it's included on the financial statements. There's thresholds for this inventory. We don't track every single thing that's purchased. Uh, the things that, that the business office is not going to track, uh, the first one is grant purchases. Um, grant purchases is more of a compliance requirement that, that doesn't necessarily need accounting uh, to be a part of that a part of that requirement. Um, I will say, and I think this is a bit of a change from what's been going on, is that correct? Uh, it, it is. Yeah. Um, now what, what we're going to have to do is, when we're, we're saying uh, not, not tracked, uh, the, we're, we're relying on our grant officers more uh, now than we, than we have in the past when it, when it deals with the disposition, um, with the purchasing uh, and tracking of um, uh, their equipment. Um, capital assets are assets that are 5,000 and up that, the business, that we physically, the business office physically has to count. Um, items that are considered sensitive, uh, I, I hope I'm not Generally, they're, they're between five hundred and five thousand dollars. Generally, and um, the business office uh, does not have to physically count every one of those items. Now we're going to test those items, but those items there are twenty something thousand sensitive items on, on the campus today, and we can't physically count twenty something thousand items. Uh, the business office can't. That's why we're relying on our grant officers and uh, our division chairs and department chairs that have sensitive items. Um, sensitive items is going to go into that. Yeah. I don't want to. No, that's all right. Yeah. Um, what I want to point out on the grant purchases, is, um, whether it's a sensitive item or not, when we looked at this process, um, what we determined was that there was a gap in information between a gap between the business office and the grant coordinators or the managers, uh, you know, because you've gone through the work of, of writing the letters, the grant letters, and doing whatever you need to do to get this grant. You've gotten the quotes. You're probably the buyer in the situation. You've gotten the quotes. You've ordered the, the assets that, that the grant is um, funding. 
And, but all of that requires a communication to occur to the business office just in order for the business office to be able to track the asset. The bill, you know, the invoice is going to get paid, all of that's going to happen. And if the asset that the grant is funding is, is over five, if it meets the other criteria, it will be tracked because of, because of that reason by the business office. But tracking the assets uh, pursuant to grant compliance is, is not going to be happening in the business office anymore. Um, that's going to be happening with the grant coordinators. And I've, I've never requested a grant or written a grant letter. I don't know what that looks like, but I know that you know if you get a grant that says we're going to be able to buy two trucks with this grant, you're going to want to keep up with the, the purchases of that grant uh, funded. We're not going to uh, track individual library purchases. Um, we were doing that before, actually, and, and it actually just had to do with the way AS400 um, processes invoice, invoices. From what I understand, library materials got, got you know, billed to a particular account, and through the process of paying that invoice, they would automatically uh, end up on the capital asset listing. So is there anybody from the library department? Is that a department? So if you've seen your listing, you know, you, you've got books for $2 on there, $7. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to get back up here in a second. And then the, the other assets we're not going to track are the ones that we're about to go over, not fitting this below criteria. As um, Dean Miller said, the assets that are tracked by the business office are one of two types. Either the, the individual item costs more than $5,000, and, and I mean um, not five computers at $1,000 apiece. One server at $5,000 would be tracked. Five computers at $1,000 apiece would not be tracked by the business office um, for, for, because they're not over $5,000. That was a bad example because the computers that are 1,000 pieces will be tracked by the business office because they fall in the second category of sensitive equipment. The sensitive equipment is any, any piece of equipment that has the ability to hold memory. And this goes back to personally identifiable information and getting in the hands of bad guys and all of that. That's probably a separate workshop on information security, but the purpose is that that, that type of equipment uh, has to be disposed of in a very specific way. We can't, we can't just, you know, chuck it in the dumpster. So, um, and then I think the last thing here is annual library purchases. So what we're going to do is we're going to accumulate all the purchases in one year, and then make one asset for that year. We, you know, fiscal year 2019 library purchases, you know, fifteen thousand or whatever, whatever it is, and then they'll be depreciated. The state requires, I think, all library purchases to be tracked regardless. And uh, your report, as, as you'll see when you get it, was, it, it was, I think there was, well, I don't want to scare you. It was, it was a, 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 so, are there any questions about receiving the asset or tracking it at, up to this point? Anybody just want to express their frustration with anything? Oh, good, yeah, sorry. Uh, just a quick question about thinking of the automotive department or machine department, if you've got a, a tire changer or something, equipment that's $1,500, um, it's not going to meet this criteria of being over $5,000, so it's not going to be tracked. It's not going to be included in the inventory listing. It's not going to be one of the assets that you have to count every year. It will be. We'll, we'll get to disposing of assets later. There's no real threshold for the disposal procedures. But as far as tracking and counting every year and making sure you keep up with if you relocate the asset, if you dispose of the asset, that's going to be these assets that are 5000 and above and then the, the sensitive asset. So Does that answer your question? Well, well, I'm, I'm trying to see. So those items would show up on, on my inventory. Those other ones would not. These will not show up on your inventory listing. But they may be on there today. That's correct. <laughs> Oh, that is, that's that, yes. Correct. In fact, that is probably the case. Correct. That's correct. That is probably the case. Is that there or there? Yeah. The, the library one is. is right. so that means scanners will not be tracked either. Scanners. Uh, scanners, right? Are we tracked? All, only if it holds memory. You're, you're, you're if you, some, some. I'm not 
terribly familiar with scanners, but they, they don't they generally they don't. scan to a computer or right. you can scan right. to a right. USB. Right. Uh, unless you got a larger machine that actually can scan an email. Yeah. Yeah. Scan and copy. If it's a scan and copy, it'll hold me. Hold me. Right. Yeah. yeah, it will. And then, okay. right. 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 Now that's, and it, then it would be a sensitive item. But if it's a scanner yes, that's less than $500, uh -huh. it's about a thousand. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. About, they're about, about a thousand. Um, and they don't hold memory. Uh, they would. So what about a file cabinet? If you don't have a, if you don't have a court, you don't mind standing so everybody can oh, yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah. so, okay. yeah. Go ahead. What about a file cabinet? I've got file cabinets on inventory. Okay. I know it holds memory, right. but I mean.
so we ask that you include, you ask the vendor to include as much information about, you know, who you are, the PO number, uh, who it belongs to on the shipping document as possible. It, it helps uh, on the receiving end because it can be difficult if, you, if we don't know who it belongs to. That happens. And then we have to, you know, call the shipper and try to track it down that way. Um, and I, I'm sure, you know, that doesn't, that takes time and, yes ma'am. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, we, we don't have a central location for, say, Southwest or Carver stuff that go directly to there, but usually if it goes to Carver, if admissions is there, they do usually receive those items. You can kind of check in the location that usually they're, um, they are taken to. Miss Ida usually gets them if they go directly to Southwest. And she usually is also the one that places the order for Southwest Campus. So um, usually she probably would have an idea about that um, package if you're on either of those campuses. I'm not sure if Ms. Stokes' office receives Central Campus packages if no one is there. But I know on Carver and Southwest, usually they go to the Technical Dean's Office or admissions if someone is there who can um, sign for them. But if you happen to receive a package on behalf of your campus and it is not yours, usually the outside box does have the PO number on it that is visible for you to view on that packaging slip or that label, you can contact the business office, AP, or even an accountant, and we can look the number up if we need to determine who actually placed that order to know where it goes, if that would help any on the confusion until we can actually have a central location for shipping and receiving for the other campuses or whatever is determined at a later time. Good advice. That's, that's the key. Besides Besides the the see if you can locate that PO number and contact AP and they can track it down. And then we're going to get to a process a little bit later by relocating an asset and we'll, you know, we'll do, you, do you have a recommendation for Ms. Stokes for the central campus? If there's an item that. Any, it goes straight to shipping. Straight to shipping. Okay. I might get some bullets. Any other questions about receiving or tracking before we So now relocating an asset. This is, like I mentioned earlier, relocating, um, which is usually the first thing that happens before disposing of an asset, is really where I think a lot of the, the, the differences that we, we encountered came from. So um, relocating an asset applies to the assets that are tracked by the business office. These procedures, I should say, apply to assets that are tracked by the business office. Um, because again, that, there's that information gap between what, you know, who's using the asset, what the asset is, and then need the information that, that, that the accountants need in order to prepare the financial statements um, and, and know where that asset is. So um, relocating the asset, it, it, it can apply to the assets that are tracked by the business office. But I think um, we were talking, you, you may be looking at an asset and not know whether or not it was $5,000 when it was new, whether the threshold was 5,000 back then or was it 2,000 back then. Um, you may not know if that asset is, 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 is an asset that's being tracked by the, the office, uh, the business office. The first thing I would suggest is, is looking at, if, if you don't have it already, um, get a hold of your inventory and see if you can locate the asset on your inventory listing. Um, after, after a little bit of time doing the inventory, you'll sort of know what, what assets are on the listing and what aren't. But um, if, uh, if there's any doubt as to whether the asset is, is an asset that's being tracked, to, you know, I, I, I would suggest um, following this procedure for relocating the asset regardless. I think there's probably uh, some common sense involved if we're talking about something that you, you know no way it was ever five thousand dollars and you know it doesn't have a hard drive that that might be a different scenario but um, if there's any doubt at all um, i would default to this process uh, if you need to relocate an asset you, you're going to have to complete a, a inventory change request form we've got an example of what that form looks like right here 
think this is the most updated version. Um, but you've got your department, you know, your, your name here, you're the one requesting the date. You've got your uh, inventory number right there on your inventory listing. Um, so if you located the asset on the inventory listing, uh, the inventory number, the, the description, if it's got a serial number, go ahead and put that on there. And then we need to notate whether we are relocating this asset to dispose of it or whether we're relocating it to transfer it. Is this lost? Is that still That's accurate? Okay. okay. So you'll complete this form if, if you're not able to locate an asset as well. So the old status might be active. That's that one's part of us, right there. Oh, 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 this one. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. And we have we have an example form. We have a sample form in the packet. We do so, yeah. We have one already filled out here. Where where we are communicating where this asset needs to go. Okay. Yeah, there are signatures right there. The, We're saying the, the down here. Yeah, correct. We. So, I see. This is, okay. Okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. So. If, we, if we've got an asset in building one and we need to go to building two, that, that, that information needs to be on this form. Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> it does. Uh, I have a question. <coughs> we need to move a lot of offices. Yeah. You just tell us everybody can do this course. All right. We're going to move offices and things like that. As we're, so does this apply to like moving it? We, like if Jackie had to move, does it go <coughs> with car? Yes, because cause we're. We're going to physically need to update AS400 to say where it's going. Okay. Um, so we're going to have um, we're going to have a lot of uh, transfer uh, that, that we know is coming up soon. Um, yeah, when you do your yeah. inventory account, you, you've got campus, department, building, and room. Does that sound right, Tony? Campus, department, building, and room on the inventory report as far as the location. Uh, in most situations, all of them do not specify the room number, but it does um, specify the um, campus and department. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah, when you're doing that, it doesn't say the room number? Not all of them. Okay. All of them don't actually indicate the actual <coughs> room number that's the item. I do have a question. Yes. The question I have has to do with, you know, there's several people. I've been listening and, and looking at the form and lost form and it. Like uh, Dr. Sykes said, we can't find a weak contact, okay, um, uh, security. But, you know, some of us have moved around different departments and become new chairs or whatever, and other stuff was ordered and, may, and, and, and it could have been disposed of, but still comes on that inventory sheet to right. you. Right. And right. so all of a sudden you can't find it. Right. right. Okay, or it was transferred to somebody and it's not on that sheet. Right. So. Are we still to send them a lost form? That could yeah. be as many as 15 or 20. Okay, because I that it kind of if it's not all if it's supposed it doesn't come off the next inventory sheet, then it's kind of hard for you to determine, especially right. if you're a new chair, right. an area that you didn't order the I equipment. I think the way this is going to work is you, you're going to do an inventory count. You're going to identify everything. Anything that's lost is going to end up on this form. Yeah. And then and then I think the the campus police will investigate. It may be that. They, the so they may find out where it may be. Changed. Right, right. The business <laughs> office may find out. You know, we may have someone in a whole other department that took on that asset, and they're in the middle of counting their assets. And then, you know, part of when we get to that, we'll, we'll discuss. We want to keep your eye out. Because we did a lot of that could be. like, like in, in in areas. Sometimes we we when we got some new equipment, we transferred some like to security themselves and different things. There was a transfer form. But the way you're saying it could still come back on our inventory, and and you know we don't remember because we don't have that list. So now we're going to list it lost and send yeah. security. They may may be looking for a hundred things that uh, you know they really don't need to. If we just would update the form. And that that's a perfect example of how we sort of got here is is moving that asset to security or to another department, uh, not communicating back to the business office that that asset has been moved. And so the next time you see your inventory, hey, it still says I have this, this widget. But if you filled out the form and it was sent to them, but not taken off that list, that's the question. The question is, you know, we filled out the form and we sent it in two years ago, but it's still coming up in our inventory. Well, well it's, it's part of that. It's part of the investigation. You know, we're going to want to see the form. Retain a copy of the form. We're going to want to know. Absolutely. Well, I mean, well, that's, I mean, we have to go through the process. 
And so, yeah, we got we got to go through the process. So, if it was transferred, we would like to to, to see the form, and and uh, hopefully we kept a copy of it. Um, but if not, then it would be considered lost for uh, you know for, for this. And if you have assets that are if you have assets that aren't on your inventory that may belong to another department, um, you need to let us know. That, that was what I was getting ready to mention, that you might have stuff that you don't know where it came from. Right. So how does that come in there now? Right. To where you have stuff that right. we, we, I know you can identify and put a serial number on. Mm -hmm. It might help Chief if he's looking for something right. and say, oh, it's over here now. Right. So we know it. So there needs to be something on there that says, just found item or something that was not yeah. in our list, but it's on here that was sure. transferred from somewhere. Um, okay. Um, I was going to ask that. I think that's going to. I think we're going to cover that when we talk about actually performing the inventory count. Sure. Okay. Um, I think we're going to cover that um, because that, that's a great point. You know, I think I think if it were me I, and I'm the one wanting to transfer the asset, I've got my name here saying I want to transfer this asset. To um, and and then I've got somebody receiving the, approving the asset, receiving the asset on their end, or maybe maintenance comes and gets the asset. And every time that asset changes custody, we want a signature on here. Me personally, if I give up an asset that's expensive that I'm responsible for, uh, I'm going to make sure I get a copy of whoever signed and took it from me. You know, because I know that if the asset doesn't make it to its destination, I want to be, you know, the site comes to my office, I want to be able to say, no, 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 I, I gave it to so-and-so on this date, here's their signature, and, and then the next step of the investigation would go to the next Yeah, my, my, uh, I think my question uh, is, is, uh, is once you've done that, you've done the form correctly, um, is there a particular reason why it's not taken off your inventory list for the next time? Well, th th that's a good question. There's a couple of answers to that. One, if you, dis if you need to dispose of a piece of property, and you fill out that form, and maintenance comes, and we relocate it to the staging area, which we'll cover. Um, there's time involved in listing that item on gov deals or scrapping that item. There's time involved in that, so there's still a, a lot of things that have to happen before that asset comes off your listing. So um, if if you dispose, if you relocate an asset two weeks before your inventory count, chances are it's still on there. But you know, when you get your inventory, every inventory I've ever done needs to be adjusted and reconciled. There's always something on there that's just not right. And, and part of that might be, okay, well, here's this asset listed as active on my listing. I don't have it, but what I do have is the form where I sent it somewhere, and you attach it to that inventory observation report. And if that doesn't answer the question completely, when we talk about the inventory count, hopefully we'll cover it. But again, I think that's a, that's a cover your, your rear end kind of thing. If I'm sending an asset that I'm responsible for somewhere, I want to make sure I know who took it from me. Here's an example of a completed form. It's been typed in, it's all pretty good. It says business office here, Adam Merkel. He's sending this particular item, a copier, this serial number. He's, he's disposing of it. So it's being uh, transferred to the staging area, which we'll, we'll talk about when we get through the disposal process. And then there's pictures. Now, um, let me skip. Let me skip to. Well, I don't know where to go on that setup. But um, I think a best practice is when you get an item, especially, again, I, I keep thinking about the nursing department. Where's the nursing department at? I keep thinking about your department and me and Tanya going through there and finding all these weird. Weird pieces of equipment. And, and <laughs> at one time, I'm looking at a dummy, wondering if the dummy's on the list. You know, I don't know. Um, but you've got all these very strange pieces of equipment that, 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 that we don't know what they are. You know, and so a picture would would be would have been extremely helpful, especially in automotive and welding. We we're looking for. I can't remember. We were looking for something that we didn't know what the heck it was. It was called like a do everything big or something. And you could provide a picture would have been really helpful. So, so I think a best practice is when you get the item in, take a couple of quick snapshots. You know, one, the, the best snapshot is going to be the one here that's got the, uh, I thought it was that one, maybe it's not, the serial number. Maybe that, maybe that is the serial number. We want to get a, a picture of the overall asset and then a picture of the serial number. That would be the two minimum that I would get. Um, 
you know, this process doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to go hunt down a digital camera. Cell phone videos are fine. Take a couple snapshots, email them to yourself, um, print them off, and then and stick them with your, your packing slip that you've got, your invoice. You know, again, we just have a complete record of what this asset is. Um, that'll help if we have to relocate the asset. This is information that we would pass on if maintenance were to have to relocate something, and they don't know what it is. We would, we would, we would let them know, hey, this is what you're looking for. We, we ask for a picture when you're disposing of an item, and we even have to pick it up and take it to a staging area to make sure that we're getting the right whatever it is. So if you could snap a picture um, and, uh, you know, I mean, print it out and put it with your, put it with your disposal form. Um, so, we'll, you know, so when Mr. Holder's crew comes and picks up that item, if it's a large item, and we take it to a, a staging area, then we, we actually know what it is. You know, they help. Uh, the the pic pictures help a lot. Because um, again, when you're looking at the description, uh, it's difficult to tell what that item is because we don't know. We don't know. Ms. A lot of what I do is because I don't know what you all are ordering, I go to the site that you are ordering from and I link on, you know, whatever you're trying to order so that. Before I even approve the requisition, I see what you are ordering. So you can go to that site that you are ordering from and print out your documentation also, which yeah. will be, can be pictures too. Yeah. 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 Anything yeah. that helps, because we're looking at a description that we don't know yeah. what it is. It is. When we were in the welding, we were looking for this, this widget thing. We kept Googling it and trying to find something close to figure out you know, what, what, what it was. So. May I ask a question? Yes. Or make a statement. One of the process. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the processes in the uh, requisition is that we have to add quotes and other things. So during that process, uh, generally there's going to be a photograph or a picture of the item, and that's a permanent record at requisition. So you know you can kill two birds with one stone. You know, Absolutely. My dad always told me that. You know, rather than wait until it got there. So. With that picture being part of the requisition process, that's what started it all. Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're going to, well, fortunately, we're going to a new ERP, so I don't know if we're going to be able to cross reference what we're doing now in AS400 and Banner. So, um, keep records. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, keep, keep records. So, I know you're attaching the documents in AS400 now. I don't know in manner that we'll be able to go and retrieve what you're attaching now. I don't. I don't know. If, in fact, I don't believe we'll be able to. Uh, so, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we when we get there next in 2020. I think it's a it's a good point that Ms. Andrews brought up and was excellent, sir. Is, is to, to take a pic, you know, to, to get a screen grab of that item when you're on the website, right? They're yeah. looking at it and, and keep that with your records. You know, we live in a paperless world, or we're moving that way. But there's really no no substitution for the quality of, of just an invoice and a, and a package with pictures like this. I mean, we we I've been doing this a while, and we try to move towards paper. And every once in a while, we hit a roadblock where we this just can't be done paperless. It's just not effective because the people that need the information may not have access to the uh, you know, logical access to the machines or the, the applications that hold the data. So, um, uh, you know, there's nothing that really replaces a, a, a file, a manila file holder with, with paper. So, um, and and in any, if you have a system that's failed uh, for whatever reason, uh, you can, you know, you can always refer back to the file and, and, uh, and sort of reconstruct it. These are practices that, that are good practices, whether or not you have AS400 or Banner or, or whatever accounting system you use, and whether you're in uh, the not-for-profit world, the governmental world, the for-profit world. These, these procedures are all basically the same. Um, so we talked about the form. We showed you an example of the form, an example of maybe what some pictures might look like. Um, there's an approval. Uh, let's go back. approval that's required in order to move the asset that's just to make sure what's going to happen is I think Tanya is Tanya's going to get 
the, the form, am I right? You're going to you're going to review it for completeness to make sure it's correct, and then I think Dean Dean Miller actually approves the relocation. Um, Dean Miller actually receives it before Does he? I okay. do, and okay. I'll be the last person to receive it to make the change. Okay, so you don't see it until the system is being updated. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Here's a flow chart of, of sort of everything that we've, we've talked about in terms of relocating the asset. I think, Adam, they're going to get a copy of this. Is that right? Okay. So uh, this is just a quick reference. So you're not flipping through, you know, six slides that, that we've got to in order to figure out what to do. You can see here you're the employee. You know, if you're moving multiple items, just get in a centralized area, take pictures of the item, serial numbers and all of that, identify the asset, uh, IDs from your listing. And you've got your form that's got all the assets that you're, you're relocating. Um, if you, I guess if you have the report, you're able to locate the asset. Uh, if you're not, I think we talked about it, we're going to talk about this in the inventory account. Um, you can get some help. You can get with the purchasing agent to address the PO issue we talked about earlier. You can go to a paper file if you, if you maintain a good paper file to see what the asset is to try to get the information. Uh, and then you, you fill out the form, you Dean Miller's signature. I'm not, I can't speak to this particular step about the grant officer. That, right. that uh, means our, our grant officers, they, they, they know who they are. They are. Um, if we're going to move, if we're going to transfer an item that was purchased <coughs> by a grant, um, which I know um, for really all of our campus that have some equipment that's been purchased by a grant. And uh, if you're a grant officer, uh, if, that, if that equipment is being moved, the grant officer has to sign off on it. Been moved, if it's being disposed of, it, it has to go through that grant officer for their records and, and their approval. So uh, it's part of their process. So you've got your you've got your form and your pictures, you know this is me. Uh, the business office has a couple of processes they go through, and then if we need maintenance to um, to actually move the asset, if we're talking about a large asset, we need some some help. Um, business office is going to use their ticketing system to submit a ticket, is that correct? And then maintenance will come and, and uh, move that item. I'll tell you, I don't think we have here, um, by the time that when they submit the ticket, their maintenance is going to have the approval to move the item at that point. Am I right? But, okay. Yeah. In other words, that's not going to have to come from, right. from what they, okay. We're going to do that in terms of. Yeah. Yeah. So maintenance moves the asset and then they forward that sign form when they're done back to Tanya she updates the system and now you know the, the system now reflects where the asset actually is which is which is helpful especially when you come to do the count. May I ask a question? Yes, sir. Now that form going back to it you don't have to go back but okay. my recollection you can put multiple items on that yes. form yes, right? and then you have the signature because one of the issues we had was if we had a hundred items that had to be yes, sir. relocated you had to fill out an individual form for every item, and then you had to have a person sign each individual item. And it, it really became, I mean, Jesus. well, it was just a pain yes. mm -hmm. to sit there and sign 100 sheets of paper. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a second page for this yeah. format. Yeah. You can yeah. list it. Looks, I'm, I'm yeah, it looks How many? 75 assets, maybe? 50 assets? Yeah. You can do four. <laughs> and it's fillable, too. It's an Excel form. Okay. So you'll be able to fill it out. And he put multiple. <coughs> it's fillable. We're going to get it on the employee forms. You'll be able to fill it out and put multiple. If you need many things moved or transferred, you can put you can put them on the form. And uh, you know, I, I, we haven't talked about this scenario, but I, I'll, 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 I'll I'll speak to it hoping you agree. But you know, if you've got your inventory listing, you've got 50 assets that's got to be moved. Um, I'm not sure, you know, the, the, the whole goal here is to make sure that the information about the assets is getting back to the business office so that we can update the system and keep up with where everything is. You know, it seems efficient to me, and I'll let you know decide if it's, if it's appropriate or not. If you've got that inventory listing, you know, you, you mark off which items are being relocated. If they're all being relocated to one particular area, I'm not sure why, if you've got the listing, necessarily would, would transcribe that information on the form. I still think you need the form. You would just need to reference the inventory listing and then also sign off on that as well. I, mean, I, I would be okay with that. Yeah, we're just trying to, we're trying to make sure the information gets back. 
Yeah. Can you do this? Then That's the goal here. Where you have that form and you can say C attached. Exactly. I'll staple it to it. Exactly. And that way all the listings are there. Okay. All right. Yes, y'all want on the results that, that I am, how it how we got there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah. if somebody has for efficiency bypass filling out all the different things and just attached an inventory report, mm -hmm. um, if you have an entire department moving, that kind of thing, yeah. you know, th there's really no reason why that yeah. would so bypass. And I'm, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. But but don't do it for one or two items. No. Okay, because <laughs> we do have some departments, entire departments that are moving. So if you got two, three, four, five items, you know, 10 items, put them on the form, you know, but if you have a lot of items, um, okay, you have your, uh, you have your, your, your inventory forms and, um, you know, you're moving, I don't know, 50, 100 items. Okay. Just give me a call. We'll, we'll work it out. I want, I don't want to make it like too compli complicated. So, but, uh, if you have four or five items, put, put it on the form. <laughs> and we'll go through that process. I just want to be clear. If, let's say we are, we are moving, we're moving from one building to another, we right. wouldn't need to do that we, no. since we're still we're on not the same campus. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. We're, we're going to do yours different. We, <laughs> too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> we, we do have to get the end yeah. result. Yeah. 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 Yours will be different. Your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's something else. That's why we changed how we, we treat you. I do think you mentioned something. We're tracking the inventory per campus, per department, and per, per building, I believe. And so um, so we do still need to know where everything's going, even if it's moving, up, moving right. to a same, another building on campus. Um, but I think the situation that we're talking about here, it's reserved for when you have, you're clearing out a whole you know, room or a whole right. building. You've got you know, th those type situations. Not, uh, I've got this asset, or i got like three or four assets, and we need to dispose of them. You know, um, I will say if, it, if, they, if they identify on the inventory report, it's been helpful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, making yeah. sure we update the right items. So. I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, For the departments that have more than uh, one source to purchase equipment for their area, and you all are saying that the grant uh, coordinators are responsible for the inventory that they purchase. <coughs> How are you all making sure that all of the inventory is being counted in an area? Say like in nursing, they have voc ed purchasing, they have Title III purchasing, and they have state workforce development purchasing. So in their area, they have equipment from all of those restricted sources, not just state funds. So how are you making sure that everything is counted, you know, in their area? When you, yeah, you know, that, you, when you assign it to the grant, you see what I'm saying? She got four sources yeah, in her area. The, um, the so how are, you, how are we making sure that we count everything? Or, she, you know, she going to count from her list and then she got, she count 10, she got 50 items in her, in her area. She count 10 from her list and then she got 40 on here like, okay, where are these, you know, where yeah. did he come in? He got 20 on the list. Mm -hmm. He come in, he's counting. So how are we going to make yeah. sure that all of the equipment in the area from different sources are being counted? Yeah. Uh, on the, in, the, in the inventory, is it separated by account or by department? It's strictly by department. The by, inventory by. list and the, the state yeah. fee um, account number. I will say that April and I, in reference to Voc Ed, we have already been working together and she has an inventory list for Voc Ed. So if needed, I guess we could follow somewhat the same procedure in reference to cross-checking and referencing for um, Title III funds or uh, whatever other restricted program funds that it may be to kind of make sure that we're balancing, uh, if I'm answering your question, 
Well, really, we, every, on the federal level, everything is going kind of across the board and super circular. We're having, we're going to have to make changes anyway for how we do our inventory. We're going to have to be totally responsible for them because we have other entities that come in and do our audits and check on us. So we had a meeting yesterday, some changes that I have to talk to my boss about, but we got, we're going to get something in place because now they'll regulate how we're going to do our inventory. Mm -hmm. So that'll work itself out. We just need to meet and talk about how we're going to go forward with it. Yeah, because how you count the assets that the business office is tracking and how you count assets that the business office is not tracking now, but now are we, two different. I track on the federal side for both of my grants. I have detailed tracking records for the, the technical side of it. And I, my receiving stuff, I make sure I put my eyes on everything that I order for technical. When it's being installed, I make sure I go by there to make sure that they're installed and what they need to. Right. Or, so I communicate a lot with the instructors. So we don't really have those on the technical side. We don't really have the same issues. Our stuff is pretty much worked out. And I also tag for my federal programs myself. So our stuff is our stuff is straight, and if something gets moved, they know my instructors know to contact me right. and say we are moving such and such. So we're we're we've already been doing this, so we pretty straight. Okay, but you see what I'm saying? In the department, you got 50 items. But there's so, but y'all count everything five thousand no, dollars and over, saying, right? But now they're going to that the 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 grant are responsible for the count. So that means that you got you got different people in those areas counting. You see what yeah. I'm saying? I, I can't understand what you're we're saying. We're going to have to de determine which are the items that were yeah. moving yeah. to determine if the grant coordinator. Right, right. Um, if the grant coordinator, yeah. yes. Well, and so we, can, we can do that by asset, right? Well, we can find out where, where the asset. But well, I'm just drawing this out. She said they've got their straight. So if you eliminate all the obvious, all you have is what's left over. Oh, yeah. If you've got the grant and you've got she's the got federal, then all that's left yeah, is. Yeah, she's got a small grant. We're talking of, um, okay, specifically I'm talking about Tower 3. I mean, they buy most of the equipment. I mean, yeah, my, my, my part of say, Title 3. I'm about your book Well, no, but my Title 3, is, I held it the same way. My Title 3 is straight. For my two campuses. No, we're not, but we talk yeah. about the main It's not just your yeah. campus. It's just not just Carver and, and Southwest. Southwest. You know, Southwest don't have top three. So we're not talking about just Carver. We're talking about the big campuses. We're talking about Central and Maine. That's where the mo major purchases are made at. Well, so, well let's talk about purchases that are that are over five thousand that were yeah. attracted for the business office from purchases pursuant to a grant. Let's separate those completely. Yeah. On this side, yeah. on this side, every every year, twice a year, we're going to count those assets that are that are five thousand and above. Now, you might separately over here be taking an inventory for grant compliance, and you might also count that same asset that was over five thousand and above. The the the, the 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 process and the objective of the process are are very separate. Um, you know, we're trying to count assets to make sure that the, the value of our assets are appropriately reflected in our financial statements. You might be trying to count those assets to, to, to track and for audit compliance for your regulatory agencies or the grant. They do care. If, yeah, they come in and, and make, want to make sure you've got everything there. So they're, they're, they're probably, it's not like what you were saying. What we do, we've got multiple people count the same asset. And I think yeah. you, you may end up having that. Now, now your your um, inventory count. Yeah, we're going to talk about it, the inventory count here in a little bit, and, and it's the scope of this is not including inventory count for grant compliance. Again, that's that's going to be so separate. You can do that at any point in time you want. The observation count that we have to complete has to be close to the year end because we have to make sure that at year end we have a, the right number. Um, so I think the objectives of the count are just different. different. Yeah. But what Tony and I do, I go out with her across the board when she calls me and count. With her, that's something we started in the past year to make sure we got everything. So I go out with her, even though it's not Title III stuff. But if she calls me and says we go in such and such account, so I go with her. Right. So we don't miss anything. And we have, I have my list, and she has her overall list. Right. 
And you're doing that for the image, for the financial statements inventory, or the well, just grant compliance? Well, just compliance yeah. inventory. Yeah. So we run the inventory at AS400. We're not going to have any grant assets on there. Well, excuse me. We'll on only the have the assets thousand. that qualify for the 5,000 yeah, essential right. equipment. Yes, sir. I'm a little confused because everything is requisitioned to AS400, regardless whether it's a grant purchase or a state money purchase. Right. And so why would we try to separate it? Because it's all accounted for. It should still add up. The count should be the same. You can't, if you get a grant, you still got a requisition right. through the AS400 right. system. So why would that count? Uh, there's yeah. a couple, that's a great question. Uh, maybe. Uh, Dean Miller can answer it better than I can. Well, I, I think... I've got a few ideas. Yeah. I, for, for the grant coordinators, we just want to make sure that, that those items that are that are that that was purchased with the grant, um, that the grant coordinator knows where, where it's going. I think when in doubt, uh, because I know Title III buys a lot of equipment, um, when in doubt, I think we should run it through uh, Dr. Crenshaw's office uh, because it may, you know, it may have been um, purchased with Title III if, if it was a piece of equipment that was purchased on the, on this campus. Now, if if you have a question about one or two items, we can go to AS400 and figure out where it was purchased. You know, if you, but uh, as far as moving departments, yeah, uh, that nurse is going to eventually have to do. Yeah, that. That, that's going to be a lot of uh, equipment. We'll, 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 we'll get together on that. But, uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, one or two items, we know, you know, where it was purchased from, and we can, and we can figure out, you know, where, where it was purchased from. But um, as far as the entire department, we, we know we got some work to do there. Um, can you your question or, or give a couple of, of ideas behind your question? Um, you know, the per again, that's why we started it at, at uh, receiving, because purchasing is, is pretty much the same. Uh, when, it, when AP is processing an invoice for an item, um, at, that, at the point they have the invoice, it can go one of two different directions. We, you hit a button, and, and it enters the capital asset system, and it's now, it assigns it a number, and it's now an asset that has to be tracked. The other route is we, you know, we, we go a different route, and we, and we don't track that particular asset. And what was happening was, for example, in the library, um, we had a $150 bill for 10 books. And because we're, cap we're supposed to be tracking library assets, we, we hit this button. And now it takes 10 books at you know, $10 a piece and drops them in there. And pretty soon, the library has you know, 80,000 books on their listing that it looks like they've got to count all of them. And they really don't. So part of it is it's just a process. Uh, part of it is the, the administrative burden of keeping up with that. Um, you know, it, again, going back to the, you know, what we're talking about, with, you know, the buyer being the one to inspect the, the delivery and all of that, the grant coordinator knowing, okay, this is the item that we're allowed to buy, not this item, but this, I think there's an information gap between the grant office and the business office, and it just seems to be more effective and efficient for the grant office to, to manage the assets. Probably not more efficient for the grant office, but in the event that we have to figure out where a grant asset went, um, we're over here on this side, not having a ton of information, not knowing what the item is or, or what the grant was and all of that. And then we have the other side, which, which does have a lot of information, but if we're tracking the item, they may not know what the asset is. So it just seemed to make sense to, to put uh, the administrative burden um, in with the, with the, with the folks that, that sort of know the most about it. Does that help answer the question? There's also some, some, some other system limitations um, as far as putting in grant information and being able to keep up with that. There's, um, again, it just sort of, it, it, it makes sense to do it that way. Now, banner may change that, I'm not really sure. Any other questions on that before we? Uh, Dr. <coughs> All right, so here's some common questions that uh, Adam came up with, I think, through the process of, of, of doing this a couple of times or, or uh, some hurdles that you might come across. Um, I can't find the form. You know, we showed you the form earlier. I don't have a copy of it. Where yeah. do I get it? Um, employee forms, is that on a portal of some sort? Yeah. yeah. So that form will be available on the portal. Um, or, you know, you can always email the business office. I, I would say that's probably the quickest, best way to get to it is the, the portal. So you sent the request, but the stuff is still here. We talked about that. Um, again. That, that could be caused because it takes time to scrap something or to sell something on gov deals or you know that kind of thing. 
Um, so it could still end up on, or it, excuse me, it could still be there. I'm sorry, I meant to. How about two years later? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're hoping to fix that. I think that's part yeah, of why we're here and, and part yeah, of what we're trying to accomplish. But, but yeah, so you send the form to get something relocated and it's still there. It just hasn't made its way through to get that stuff out of the way. Or what I don't have here is we the, the asset left, but it's still on my sheet. And we know we talked about that. There's a time gap there of getting the, uh, the asset disposed of properly. So. Um, but you know, if you want to follow up on a fifth inventory time, and, and you know, you need to know where that asset is because it's still showing active. Uh, follow up with the with the person that uh, that took it from you. Um, and again, if you've got that form, you'll know who that person is, and you can sort of track it down. That's 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 true. But I mean, I'm, what I'm really saying is sometimes we get assets we're still on there for. 2011. That, 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 you know, that, that's probably the result of, 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 of a poor of um, adherence to the existing process. We just, things didn't occur the way they should have been. That, that's going to happen. Yeah. Part of the uh, part of the reason we do the annual inventory count is to, is to catch those. And so uh, if we if we have some, some holes in the process and then we don't have this catch-all process of counting inventory once a year to reconcile, make sure we got everything squared away, a couple years down the road we end up with situation you're talking about. So. I don't have a camera to take the picture. We talked about that. Just you can snap a cell phone camera shot, email it to yourself. You're good to go. Or, or get somebody with a camera, but I'm sure it's right. Yeah. 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 yeah, call us if you have problems with come out. I don't have a scanner uh, to scan or email the form. That might actually come up uh, yeah. uh, often. And um, th there's scanners all over the place. Just about every copier these days is a scanner. Go ahead. Just take a picture of it. It's, it's you can do that as well. Yeah, I think I may have that here um, in a picture, clear cell phone photo. Yeah. Um, we do that when we're auditing. Sometimes we get out into you know we're auditing a farm or something like that that doesn't have a ton of equipment like that. No way to scan and copy it. We'll take a, a cell phone snapshot of, of the document. There's even actually free applications now that will uh, convert that from a picture to a scan or a picture. Then no one ever knows to take a picture of it. All right, so the request, um, Dean Miller looks at the request and he, he's going to send it back to you if it's missing some information. Uh, if it's missing the asset ID numbers um, and, and, and Dean Miller thinks that they should be there because we may be. Um, you may be asking us to move um, assets that are large, but not necessarily over 5,000. We may be moving assets without asset ID numbers. But if he's looking at that form and reviews it, thinks, yeah, this, you know, this machine that's in the machining department, the CNC machine that I know costs you know, $100,000, he's going to send it back to you. Um, there's no indication of proper approval. At this point, the approval he's looking for is going to be the department chair, is that correct? Or, or um, uh, they're supervisor. They're, yeah, yeah, supervisor. Okay. They're, they're the, um, in other words, he's not going to yeah. um, and, and of course, you don't have any pictures. Um, again, that may be up to Dean Miller's judgment. If it's something that, if you've got some crazy model numbers scribbled on there that we don't know what the heck this thing even is, he, he's going to know. I, I don't have any way of knowing what this is and how I'm going to move it, so I need to get some photos. He might send it back and say, send us some photos, though. We'll approve it, and then he'll send it. All right, so that was relocating. Do we have any questions about relocating? So, so the, whole, the whole purpose, or one of the purposes of tracking the assets is that when they get to the end of their lives, they have to be disposed of in a certain way. Um, so surplus assets are those ones that are, that are no longer in service. We're not going to be remodeling them or improving them or replacing a a widget inside of it to give it extra life, it's, it's on its way out. Um, those items are, are going to be deemed to be surplus items. Uh, and these procedures that I'm referring to when I specifically mean here's the method that assets are disposed of applies to every asset, not just those assets that are 5,000 or more. This is how, how the college, how the state wants you to dispose of these things. They're very specific about this. So we can't, no longer are we able to take a, a piece of furniture and just chuck it in a dumpster and call it done. You know, it's got to be moved um, to a specific area and then disposed of um, with a specific method that I'm going to cover here. 
Um, so we have a staging area. There's a staging area in Lincoln Square facility. You may have to speak on this, but the idea is that anything that's being disposed of um, needs to go to that facility. And at that point, everything makes it to that facility. Um, the individuals at that facility, I can't remember if it's maintenance or if it's going to have it's got maintenance. It's, uh, it's got to be uh, surplus, right scrap, yep. or since right. we're going to have the areas uh, yep. marked down over there. So I'm going to cover the four different. If I could, the, yeah. the, the southwest campus is going to have a different. Yes, I'm sorry. Southwest yes. campus is going to have a different area. And, uh, but you won't. We're just going to, we're going to take it and move it. That's all you need. Yeah, the, the idea here is you just have yeah. to know that you need to execute right. the relocation procedures right. to get it over there. Yeah. At that point, yeah. you know, other folks are going to handle it. So we need to dispose of it, relocate it. And then here's the disposal methods. The sensitive assets that have, you know, the assets that have the ability to hold memory, those assets have to be disposed of um, using an AID um, uh, vendor, and that is the national association for information destruction that's how they're going to take that hard drive or whatever it is out of that machine and they're going to dispose of it i don't know i can't remember if they drill a hole they do they do a bunch of stuff to make sure that that data is destroyed forever and again that's back to information security probably a different you know workshop but just understand that the reason that these sensitive assets are tracked is specifically for the method that they're disposed of we really don't care about the computer except for the fact that when we're done with it we got to make sure it's destroyed properly so that we don't have data floating around. That's the only reason sensitive assets are, are tracked. Uh, if it's got something, if the item has some market value, um, it's going to go through one of the government surplus offices. I think Gov Deals is the biggest one, the one that the college is using. <laughs> Everything that has market value, we're going to attempt to sell it as long as the, the, the um, cost and benefit it makes sense. If it's an old, you know, metal, automotive type piece of equipment that has no value whatsoever except for the fact that it weighs 300 pounds, you know, it'll, it'll be scrapped. And again, that's something that once it gets to the staging area, maintenance will facilitate getting to the scrap yard. If it has no value whatsoever, it's not worth spending the time to sell it, um, then they will, they will dispose of it by taking it to the land. Good question. Yes. In the case where they have restricted funds and they have a federal requirements for disposal of yes, sir. equipment and whatnot, what takes precedent? The federal or state? Federal. federal. Yeah, I, I think the federal is a great question. And 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 that's why um, uh, we we def we defer to the the grant coordinators first on their with their uh, assets. Um, that's why we want you know we want the grant coordinators to to see those items that may belong to them, um, just to make sure that we're we're handling those the, those pieces of equipment correctly. And because we don't want to send it somewhere that it um, it shouldn't be utilized or um, or, or, um, or, or, or take it out of service mm -hmm. if it needs to be in service longer. Um, so that's why we want <coughs> all, um, all our folks over on the grants to take a look at that, to take a look at uh, any change in disposition of, uh, you know, any grant assets. So. I imagine some grants require you to maybe donate the asset to a to another school or to... You have uh, to first see if there has a federal program on your campus that can use it. Then right. after that, there's a certain amount of money, then there's paperwork. I'm not sure that that's happening. I'm just going to put it out there. I understand. I understand. And, and it needs to be done. And I've yes. said that over and over again. Right. I've expressed it to Mr. Miller. Yes, that that is a process in EGA, which is the federal regulation for Title III, that tells you how to dispose of that equipment. Right. And again, <coughs> and that's going to take precedence over over yes. these methods here. I mean, if you have a I, I, a scenario I'm thinking of, if you've got a sensitive asset that maybe requires you to donate it to a uh, an elementary school that doesn't have much or, or something, you know. Destroying it with an NAID vendor may not be the route you go, even though we're we're saying here that's what you would do. So yeah, the, the whatever regulations per, per, pursuant to the grants that you have to follow, that's going to take precedence over over this. Um, and I, I think we were talking about um, donating assets again, e even if even if an asset is a, is not a grant asset, but the thought is well, this has some market value, but maybe not enough to you know try to post it to go deals. Maybe we've got a um, you know 
child care center or something that could use this piece of property. The asset can still be donated. It just has to still go through this process where it gets relocated, and then you just maybe communicate to maintenance what you know what we're trying to do with the asset, and we'll go from there. It's sort of a, maybe a one-off situation. But. Yes, sir. <laughs> so we're talking about computers that you've had more than five years. They're probably are they still in service? No, a okay. lot of well, they're, they're outdated. They don't run yeah. fast enough, and and we we have some in places in closets, but we we the thing is, if our grant says that five years, you can dispose, sell, whatever you're going to do. To, to just count it, to look, to the police will be looking for those computers. <laughs> I think what he's saying is about a useful life. You know, yeah, counting, right. yeah. you, everything has a life. Some of these things are going past that life. Sure. And I was looking at your definition there about in no longer in service or future service unlikely. And I'm just going to use this as an as example. I wrote off some big back TVs that were bought probably in the 70s. Yeah, it's probably still on somebody's inventory. Well, the useful life to me for a TV ended when they changed the models of the, the TV. So I, I, had, I work on two grants. We have specific rules about a useful life, especially when it comes to computers. So really and truly, what well, we can't surplus them, there's a process that you have to go through. That makes us different from the state money. But if it says three to five years, that means according to the federal government, it has no value, period. Right. And they consider a computer is the same thing as a pencil. But it's sensitive because it holds information. Right. So we have to do due care in safeguarding that information. Mm -hmm. So. I guess I'm asking the definition of a useful life accounting term yes. and this no longer in service. Sure. Because no longer in service could be two years when the computer falls and breaks. That's true. It's no longer in service. That's correct. So that, to me, is very important, that determination. Okay. Well, let's clarify that. Um, in terms of accounting, when we, when we um, take an asset and estimate this useful life, what we're saying is if we've got a computer, I'm just going to throw round numbers out here, it's a $12,000 computer, um, that's expensive I know, but I had to make, make it make sense. Uh, if we say that that asset has a useful life of six years, in the accounting world, we don't write off $12,000 the minute we buy it on the on the, the profit and loss statement. What we do is we, we spread that $12,000 over that six years, that useful life. Now if after a year the thing falls off the table and breaks, that doesn't mean that I, I don't know about the grant. I can't speak to the five-year requirement of the grant, but I know that in accounting, what you know, you just accelerate all of that expense. Right. We say, hey, we're with this this thing broke. We're going to take the asset off the books. We're going to write off the remaining cost of that asset that wasn't already written off, and then that asset is now on its way out. It's been disposed of and whatnot. Um, I don't know if that if that changes if you've got a five-year computer. That, um, let, that let me address that. Um, you are required to. Attempt to locate every asset on your inventory. Yeah, I, it, every one of them. If it's over five years, it just needs to go. Right? Yeah, you just have to execute the disposal process. Yeah, yeah. Let them, yeah. And what Dean Miller is saying is that basically we're starting from here. Yeah. We want to do procedure. Sure. So if we got 20, 30 computers that you're not using and they need to be, they're going to be surplus, disposed of, or, right? Yeah. You know, 
we'll have a procedure moving forward. Right. We've got to get all those things because I'm on the team. It's, I, I see it. It's going to be a whole lot of old stuff oh, yes. that we're going to have to Absolutely. weed out. But once we do it once, right. that's gone. Yes. Now it makes our yes. life easier moving mm -hmm. forward. So we got to start from, in order to get that point B, we got to start today. Yeah. I think we're going to, again, we're going to talk about that when we talk about the next piece, which is the actual inventory count and how that's going to be conducted. Is there any other questions about this? Uh, we'll, we'll send this form. We'll send it separately. We'll send it. We'll send just the forms to everybody. Yeah. The link. To to the forms. The link. Okay. The link. The link. Okay. And this, okay. Dean Miller, can I ask when we get this? When, when we get this copy of this invoice, yes, can the business office put the asset number on that invoice? Because it's hard for me when they send me the invoice. And then we get ready to do the inventory. Then I got to figure out the asset number. So if they could put the asset number on the invoice, since we're gonna duplicate signing twice, then give us the asset number with it. And then at that point, everything can be tagged right then, even if it's not tagged in in receiving. The, the number is not created until we pay it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. So, so they, we. That's we, not. We can't. They hit a but, point. But, but you have the packet. You have the packet slip anyway, which is the permission to pay it. So if you want, if you want it to go with the check to sign invoice, you should have it at that point because the documentation accounting term is the packet slip. That's the permission to do it. The system generates the numbers when they drop the checks. Yeah, the the the, uh, the actual asset number is not created till we till the check is cut. So can you send it to it after? Oh, okay. Sure. The yeah. big thing is, that's not. That's but, not but, but what I'm saying is, once you have the packet slip, I don't understand why you can't drop the check at that point to create that number, because the accounting term states that the packet slip is your document. That is the document that gives you what you actually got. The invoice is going to be an accumulation. If you're supposed to get ten items, mm -hmm. those ten items are going to be on the invoice. But your packing slip tells you you got four items, you got six items. That's your legal document, that packing slip. We, we may not owe it yet because nope. we haven't been billed for it. So, yeah, we're not. It's, it, well, yeah. And, and when they enter the invoice, enter the, entering the invoices into the system and but, paying the invoices are two separate it, processes. Yeah. Right. So, so enter, entering the invoices and paying them are two separate processes. So what That's happens what is saying. they've got the invoice in front of them when they input it into the system. Then you know, days later, they do a check run and they pay all of the bills. They don't have the invoice in front of them at that time because they've already input the invoice and filed it away. So it's not in front of them. They have to go back and correct me. Is that correct, Ms. Anders? Go back uh, and locate yes. the invoice. And if you want, if you want that, then Tanya just can send you the list. Yeah. She can send you your list monthly. Okay, well, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But I just need those numbers. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. wants her yeah. asset numbers. It'd be my PO numbers. But I well, that's fine, even if it's at PO that, numbers. That's really key. You need to push these when you're doing these. Mm -hmm. When you issue one, ask them. I always use Add the PO to any correspondence you send it to, yeah. it, including the invoice, because that's helpful. You add that PO because, you know, it's helpful. More data, the easier it is to, to track if there's a problem. Now, this is the inventory account procedures we're going to go through. This is probably the most important piece of, of everything we've talked about. Um, it's also probably the, the most painful, uh, how those things go. Um, but this whole process is, is you're doing this to catch any errors in all of the previous processes. So if you've relocated an asset incorrectly, you didn't follow the form, when, when you do an inventory count, you should be able to, to identify that. You'll either have an asset on your listing that, that you can't find, um, or you, you know, through the process of counting, you may end up with an asset that's not on your listing because it showed up. 
this is there to catch that. If you intend for an asset to be disposed of, if something happened in the business office and they accidentally deactivated the incorrect asset, maybe the three looked like an eight or something like that, this process will catch that. So that's why this is the most important thing because if you don't follow the relocating processes uh, properly, you don't follow the receiving, you don't follow the, the, uh, uh, the disposing process, this is your day of reckoning. You come back and, and get it all right. And it'll be a lot harder if you don't follow those processes, but this process has a specific objective, and that is to catch all of the failures of the processes that, that would have occurred throughout the year. And there's always, there's always some. I, mean, we, I do inventory accounts for for for-profit companies uh, annually. Part of the audit is for the auditor to be there and, and count the inventory. I'm telling you, you know, we're talking about inventory that's sold not necessarily capital asset inventory. Uh, but every, every time we do one, there's something. There's some PO that slipped by this way, or you know, we needed this a little bit quicker over here, and we only had this guy to do it, and so we, you know, things happen. And, and so this is there to catch all of those. The annual inventory counts are, are going to occur at the department level, and they're performed each summer. So you're going to you're going to do one that's due May 15th. And I think that's sort of the cleanup inventory. Is that right? That's your opportunity to figure out what you have, what you don't have, what's been relocated, what should have been disposed of, all of that. Um, and then there's going to be another inventory that's later in the summer, um, and that is the one that's actually done um, for the financial things, for the, as, as part of the audit. I'm not sure the frequency going forward, but you know, the, the getting it right is, is going to be a bit painful. The department supervisor, and I, I've got that term there, but that, that may be a different level of different departments. Is that correct? Could, uh, could be a department chair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be a department chair, it could be a director, it could be a dean uh, that, that uh, makes sure that the, the, the count happens. Um, it could be a manager. Um, so you're charged with that, with, with ensuring the account, uh, the account occurs. That may look like delegating it to this person or that person. At the end of the day, um, you're going to have to sign off that that inventory was conducted, it was conducted accurately, everything that's on the on the listing is is there, um, and then you've reconciled anything that's not on the listing. What are the here? So Tanya will give you the count sheets, which is basically just a listing of your of your inventory that you've got. You're going to get one today. Today you'll get one. And then um, hopefully get that sort of squared away between now and May 15th, and then we we'll come back in the summertime. Get the impression that some of you think that may have to be the same. These are just basic. Uh, inventory procedures. You want to confirm the asset on, that, that's on the listing is in service. Uh, one thing we, when we were talking about in service just a little while ago and useful lives, um, one thing to note is that if we've assigned something a five-year useful life, that's for accounting, that's, that's where we're recognizing the expense. It doesn't mean that asset can't stay in use for 50 years. It just means that there's no expense being recognized anymore. So, um, I'm at, There's a lot of assets. I saw Tony and I were, were traveling to campus. There's a lot of assets that are probably beyond their estimated useful life. You're getting, getting a lot of extra time out of them. Um, so if you've got something that's in service and, and, and you think it needs to be on that listing, your best guess is that it costs 5000 or more. You know, you think maybe, maybe it did. Um, you know, re reference the listing. Make sure it's on there. Um, if it's not on the listing, go ahead and jot down the information that you, you have about it, the serial number, the model number, if it's got a manufacturing tag that shows what data, you know, any, any information is helpful for us to figure out maybe where that asset is. We may have an inventory change form where that asset came in from another department and it's on their listing, you know, and so they, they're over there in their department trying to count assets. They've got something on their listing. They don't know where it is. You're in your department. You've got a new asset. You don't know. It's not on your listing. You don't know where it is and, and um, hopefully these two worlds will come together and we'll figure out where that needs to go. And, and you always want to ensure the information, uh, the location information is accurate. Um, again, when Tony and I were looking for assets, a lot of the location information was had, had been changed from you know new buildings and things like that. Folks 
relocating. Um, I imagine, again, this first count that you're doing, that, that might be tedious, making sure each and every one of them is correct or notating where it actually is. That might be a little tedious, but uh, once, once you get to the point where you've cleaned out the older assets, you've got the locations correct, and you've gone through this cycle a couple of times, you're going to know where these assets are. You know, um, I, I keep using automotive department because I like cars, but you, know, you go in there and, and uh, you know, they got a big old you know, diagnostic piece of equipment. I mean, that big thing is not moving. You know, you know, it's, you know it's there. It was there yesterday when you used it. And so uh, there's some efficiencies that will be gained uh, the second and third time that you start doing these inventories. So if you've got an asset on the listing and you, you can't find it, um, clearly identify the asset on the listing is not located. We don't want to make sure we want to make sure we don't confuse. I got it with I couldn't find it. And we've got to be very very clear about that. Contact Tanya um, first, I think, because. Uh, if I recall what I said before about, about having uh, inventories occurring in different departments, that asset may be on somebody else's listing. She's going to go through sort of an initial procedure investigation just to see if maybe that asset is somewhere else or to see if maybe the asset, uh, if, she run, if she runs assets by department and there's an asset in there that does not have a department listed, it will not show up on any department. So she could end up with a pool of assets that just needs to have the correct department put in. So again, get with Tanya first. Uh, but if that doesn't, if she's not able to, to figure it out, um, then, then we've got to contact campus police. Because at that point, now I, I won't speak to this, this first inventory, but once we get it all cleaned up and you've got an asset that was there last year and you don't recall disposing of it and you don't recall relocating it and it's not there this year, you know, We've got a problem. We've got to, we've got to solve it. We've got to figure something out. Uh, I I can't speak to what the um, um, is it Attorney General that of the state that has to approve all of the disclosures. There's a chance. Um, well, uh, that that goes with the AR, but um, the surplusing okay. goes. That's right. We have to notify the system office. Right. So there's, again, there's a process. We can't just say, ah, we couldn't find it. Right. Right at all. You know, we we've got to have a process and. Um, filing a report um, documenting that we couldn't find that asset, that's, that's going to be, um, I guess, the second step in this process if you're not able to find an asset. <clears throat> Again, I won't speak to what, what the process will be in, in cleaning up because there are definitely going to be some older assets that, that weren't, you know, they weren't uh, you know, illegally removed. They were most likely disposed of and just not updated. So. Does this apply to assets that are less than five thousand? Also, if, 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 it's, if it's a sensitive item, yeah. Yes. Okay. Are you going to give them an inventory separate, five thousand <coughs> separate from sensitive, or is it going to all be blended together? That's all. At this point, it's just one with all of okay. them. Yeah, separate them. Well, at this point, we're trying to clean up the total list mm -hmm. of items. Um, to make sure we have an accurate account of what we do have versus what we need to remove. So your list that you receive today will be a total list of items that are cons that are less than five thousand. That could that include less than five, and it could have file cabinets items that are not even sensitive. So please just notate accordingly. Again, the system the system. Uh, so assets that the entire cost is $5,000 or more is what's capitalized, but the AS400 system has a feature that, that has sort of gotten us in trouble a little bit, and that is if I've got an invoice that's $5,500, but it's, like I said earlier, 10 computers, if we hit a button on there, we've got 10 different computers is a bad example because it's sensitive, but you know what I mean, uh, maybe it's got 10 filing cabinets. We hit a button in that system because it's over $5,000, that's the trigger. Oh, it's $5,000, we've got to capitalize it. Let me hit this button. Now I've got 10 filing cabinets on there that don't need to be on there because it's the individual item, not the invoice total. Right. Yeah, so so I think what, what Tanya's saying is you're going to get a listing that's probably going to be, I don't know what department you're in service, it may be very intimidating when you see all the assets on this list. We're not saying that all those assets are supposed to be in existence. 
I'm trying to be sensitive about the way I say that. There are most likely going to be some older assets that should not have been on there in the first place and since have been disposed of. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Uh, okay. If you if you have those on your inventory, uh, we still have to look into it. Uh, it will be looked into by, uh, by Camps Police. Uh, the, the key thing is that we want to make sure your inventory is correct. Um, now, Camps Police, you know, there is some common sense to this. So, you know, if, if there is an asset from 19, you know, 82, this, you know, uh, but if you got one that was purchased recently, um, or one that's not that old, they, you know, that's a problem. That's a real problem. Um, we know, you know, we understand that it's, the list now is not as clean as it should be. We, we know that. Um, but if there are lost items that are on your list um, and we can't find them, they still have to be investigated. That's part of our procedure. Okay, yes, sir. That's a, that was a question I was going to ask. Um, you kind of answered part of it. But when you said there, let's say that I go through my inventory and I have multiple things, maybe there's four things that I find, I can't find, yes, for whatever. They could be way back from 1987, right. they right. could be, uh, you know, recent. Okay, so what I do is I fill out the report and I give it to Tanya, and I let, I let Tanya know the property account. But these are five I have found. Now, she's going to go back and live, look in that list that you said, right. but let's say she doesn't find them. Who contacts, will she contact she, would she go back to me, or would she contact those campus? No, we'll, we'll contact. She, That's yeah, what I mean. So we won't. So once we do our report and give it to her, right. then if she can't find it, then goes to campus police and they'll come. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. Definitely go through and do some due diligence and make sure we've yeah. we've looked everywhere for these particular yeah. assets. You know, if you've got a filing cabinet on there, it's nine hundred bucks. That you know, based on the criteria we've discussed today, it shouldn't be on there. Uh, you know. Put in some, you know, go ahead and try to locate that asset and, and, and uh, because we want to know if it's in existence so we can either properly dispose of it through the methods that we talked about or if we've got to go through a different process to get it written off because it was disposed of in the past. I've got the file cabinet. So you got all the file cabinet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, 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 the question is like after we do the cleanup, are you going to look at the file cabinet and say, well, he got it, but he doesn't need to be on the inventory anymore. You don't have to check it off anymore. That's really kind that, of that's, Yes, I think that's the, that's the cleanup that we're talking about. Right. Because like we, have, we have desk scanners that don't hold memory. Sure. Now, that's $1,000 a pop. Yeah. But I mean, I, yeah, that's like what Dr. Chuck is asking. Are those sorts of things going to stay on the No, I think that's part of the cleanup. I got them. I just, you know, yeah. just, you know, yeah. just yeah. take them off. Yeah. of that, um, uh, and, and let's talk about it, um, you know, before you fill the, the, you know, before you fill the form out, um, because it sounds like Phil got some things that really don't need to be on the yeah, list. I got the stuff, I just don't want yeah. right. And Dean Miller, we have a new definition of sensitivity, because for sensitivity just didn't mean to tell your memory. If we were told that it could be sold at a... Uh, uh, What's the store? Yeah. shop, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to count it as a sensitive item. Cameras and stuff. Yeah. 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 So do we have a new definition, and are we still supposed to try to keep up with those things? Because a thousand dollar scanner is considered a sensitive item that you could take to the Pumas shop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Different topic. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
department and specialize but most those of the time, I send them with to, values. I'll send them to Dean before I, you know, say which way they're going to go. I send them to Dean Miller and let him make a judgment call. On, I ask him, would is this considered to be a sensitive item? Now that's now. Before right. we've been, you know, we've gone through a lot of changes. So of course you're going to see things on your list that now we are not, right. you know, the the criteria is changing. The, and so, but there'll yeah. There'll still be some judgment calls. Yeah, it's some judgment There's calls. There's still going to be some judgment calls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, which uh, we're going to have to look at them individually. I got, I got, I got three more questions real quick. I got some stuff in my inventory that doesn't have an ID. And I think some of them may not even have a serial number. It's just it's listed on there, you know, Dell, Octoplex, blah, blah, blah. So I got stuff like that. I got some items in my inventory that we never ordered, but they got on my inventory, and I guess it's sort of she'll try to figure out where it would go. And then I got some stuff where we did disposable property, the property was picked up. I should have, I think it's so, I have the old disposable property forms. So will I still have to go through and like list and say, well, this item is missing, do I just, and then I got stuff that's not even on my inventory that I know that should be on my inventory. Yeah, see, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, we how won. do we know we count everything if yeah. we split, you know, if it's, you have different sources of. Well, I, I know it was titled, I think, I think all my computers now are state home. So, I mean, I know that we fall down our budget. So, I mean, I pretty much know, <laughs> that, yeah, this should be on the inventory, and I can tell you it should be on the inventory. So, mm -hmm. am I supposed to when I get this sheet? Yeah. Go through and write all this stuff out and let yes. you know what, what we think yes. should be on the inventory. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you have items that may belong to someone else, let us know. And it, it'll make it easier for us if we if we had the, the model and the serial number, and in that way we can try to find out if it should be somewhere else. Uh, but if we need to add it, yes, uh, let us let us know. Yes, ma'am. I just have one question. Should, they should be one of the, you know, one of the same. When you when you finish your inventory, you know, when you're going through your inventory list, uh, you know, you need to identify what you can't find. Um, if you can't find it, uh, let us know what you know what those items are, and uh, you know, send that so to it, us. It, and, and that's why I guess what I'm trying to ask mm -hmm. is, is the process concurrent, or is it something that needs to trigger me?
determine is this an asset that, that still exists and is in service and just not, you know, it's not in the right place, or is this something that's old and been, been sold? I think we've got to separate those two. Um, and then if it's been sold, we can remove it and, and, and document. Uh, and then if it's not been sold, it needs to be on another listing or it needs to be in your department. We'll, we'll research to find out if it's in another department, we have to change it. If it was accidentally disposed of, it shouldn't have been, you know, that, that kind of thing. The number, I mean, not the so asset. Get it to the inventory department. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I think we need to, you know, uh, some of this is going to have to do with the, the, the effort it it takes like if it's a if it's a 19 you know 82 yeah 27 television to you know I don't know if TVs were invented but you know if it's you know um, we're we're gonna remove that item you know we'll just write you know write it up we'll remove it um, you know if we if you know that it's a, it's an old item that you can't find and we don't want to spend a lot of effort trying to locate it, okay, in this in this process. Uh, but let me tell you, if it's if it's a if it's a new item, we we're, we're gonna look into it. If it's a newer item, we're gonna because we need to find out what happened to it. Uh, so so can we just make with this first run unless at some point maybe can we just make notation on the inventory sheet or do we need to go fill out that, that separate form? Uh, my, my suspicion is that everybody's gonna have to do that now. That's that's my suspicion because you're gonna you're gonna have items you're, you're gonna have items that were lost you know you're gonna you're gonna have items that maybe should have been transferred somewhere um, it may not be a lot of items but um, but we're but we're gonna, we're gonna have to do the form on it's my suspicion. Um, what I was gonna mention is about the uh, once we trigger and get everything finalized and kind of figured out, the pickups and all that stuff, yeah. please make sure that if we got the pictures are attached, if you could put them in an area to where, okay. you know, you can gather them kind of in an area to where we can pick it up and they're kind of located in, a, in an area where we can go one place. But if we got to go multiple, we'll do that. But if we help them to us, is we got to take those items and move them right. over here so if we can gather them. Some of the stuff you can move easily. Some of it is just it's going to take time, like copying or something like that. If it's something that needs to be relocated, those are the things. So everybody catch that. If you're still trying to kind of contain them yeah, in an area, that, that would help. If, that as would best help. we could. So basically, then we the inventory sheet. We go down through it. Once we don't locate, we put on the sheet that you're telling mm -hmm. the form. We send it to the problem property account and then she looks to see what it is and what she, if she can't find it she sends it to her. Right. So then so then in the summer when we get the report back will we get the same stuff again so we have to do it again or will no, we upgrade it by that? No, that's, no, that's my question. No, it will be cleaned by the next okay. That's by, good. <laughs> by the next report. That's that's the point. That's that's why we're going through these exercises. To make sure that all future Inventories are smooth, more smooth. Great. All right, so I um, can't remember if I touched on this, but when you're doing an inventory, be, be aware of assets that, that you think ought to be on there but aren't. Yeah, it may have been um, that when we went into the system, when, when we sold something, we deactivated the incorrect item numbers. So just be aware of that. We want to make sure we get that corrected and, and get the correct asset written off and, and the right asset back on the list. Um, so then the completed and, and reconciled sheets are going to be signed by the, the, the department supervisor, the person charged with, with making sure that inventory. And that's the one that's going to come in. No, they're, they're coming today. going to give you the, uh, Ms. Banks is going to give you the, the uh, asset listings, but she can also provide this asset listing to you throughout the year if, if you need to get a head start on it, if you want to follow up to make sure a particular asset got disposed of, whatever the case is, she's, you know, if you want to manage your inventory, I'm, I'm sure you're not going to get a whole lot of 
complaint from anybody in the business office that's going to prevent you from doing that. So, you got to close the marks, but I don't think I actually have any closing marks. Questions? Adam, you got anything to chime in? No? I feel like I can see your brain working on this. <laughs> I think, you know, getting the inventory right, it, it, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be quite painful. Um, every one of these departments that has a difference is going to end up on Ms. Banks' desk, and she's going to have to figure out how to, how to work with you to get the inventory right. So um, I, I would say just, you know, try to be as patient as you can and put in the work this first time, get it all cleaned up, and, and going forward, it's going to be much easier, much easier. <clears throat> okay, Ms. Banks is uh, going to be handing out your, your inventory listings, and uh, Dr. Sykes is going to talk about uh, the acknowledgement form that we all have to sign before we leave. Just want to say thank you for taking time to come to come be with us this morning. Let's, let's get to my hand. I'll just sit in there, you know, just listening to some of the questions and some of the sitting there thinking about uh, like Crenshaw. Think about the work that we've got to do here at Bishop and you all have how many schools? Uh, eight or six. Eight or six schools. Just think what they're dealing with. I'm not saying that they're having problems with, but that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And I just want to share with you why we at this point. For years, we have not been keeping track the way we should of these items. It hasn't just started. And since I have been here, I know we've had repeat findings. <clears throat> Same findings over and over and over. And we have auditors on campus right now. So this last repeat finding, I was called in by the chancellor. What they're doing now, when the college has a finding, they have to go in, share with the chancellor and the board what we're going to do to keep from having findings. So if we have another finding now, I got to go to the chancellor, I got to go to the board and explain to them why we have this finding. If we have a finding you know, you know, from a various department, they're not going to call you in to meet with the board. Who are they going to call? To me. So I, I'm being held accountable. And you as a supervisor, now I'm holding you accountable. We've got to clean this up. There's no if and buts about it. We've got to clean it up. So this is your opportunity to clean it up. Items back 1927, I'm not so much concerned about those items. But if there's a missing item from two years ago, I got a problem. I got a big problem with that. And yes, the chief is going to investigate. So if it's a recent item missing, let's find it. And I want to know if that item is missing. So I'm, I'm clear? Yes, sir. This is a big deal. This is serious. If this is public information. When there's an audit finding, this is public information. So I just want to make sure everyone is clear. And Tanya has a form that you're going to sign as supervisor. That basically, I'm holding you accountable for these items that, that um, that, that, that's in your department. Why am I doing that? I had to find that I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm just, I'm just serious. I'm just serious about it. Keep it real. Yeah, well. I'm, I'm held, I'm held, I'm held accountable. So I'm going to hold you accountable. It's a 
serious business. And I, there's no other way, no other way to put it. There's no other way to put it. We've got to follow these, these procedures. Um, we've been working on these procedures now for what, maybe five or six months, maybe. We've got to follow procedures. Again, that's part of what you're, what you're saying here, that you are going to follow the procedures. The one thing I will uh, recommend is that um, maybe the next two or three weeks, put a, put a day of a couple of days, a couple of hours each week where uh, you will make yourself available. So, you know, if they have questions that they can come and okay, meet with you, but, you know, you don't have to see a lot of information. So make yourself available for next week, for a couple hours, get them out to you come to you and get the dress. I just want to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank